Hello friends, a very good morning to all of you. Hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to discuss exercise four of a pair of straight lines. And uh, I have already copied my questions in the PPT. So let me first share my screen. And yes, so here we go. Yeah, this is exercise four, question number one from the pair of straight lines chapter. So the question is saying if uh, lambda x square plus 10xy plus 3y square minus 15x minus 21y plus 18 equal to 0 uh, represents a pair of straight lines, then the value of lambda is. So it's a uh, general uh, second degree equation, right? And we know for uh, a pair of straight lines, this delta must be equal to zero. Now, what is delta? Okay. Uh, we will discuss first. Let me write the equation first. So it is given as this lambda x square plus 10 xy plus 3y square minus 15x minus 21y plus 18 equal to zero, right? Lambda x square plus 10xy plus 3y square minus 15x minus 21y plus 18 equal to 0. For this equation to represent a, a pair of straight lines, to represent this equation as pair of straight lines, pair of straight lines, our lambda must be equal to 0. Now, what is lambda? Lambda is basically defined as this A, B, C plus 2fgh, right, minus af square minus bg square minus ch square equal to 0, okay? And in determinant form, in determinant form, if you see, we write, used to write this delta as this a, b, c, okay? Then here we get f, f, g, g, and here h and h. So this... Uh, this is the representation of delta in determinant form and this delta must be equal to zero. So I think everyone is aware of this. I'm just recalling this. Uh, so let's write, let's write the value of this lambda. Okay, I will, I will be using this determinant form. So I'm writing it in determinant form as what is A here? A here is lambda. Okay, and uh, like this is in the, uh, what you say, we have to compare this with our standard equation of second general degree equation. Okay. So, so what is a second, uh, uh, standard second, uh, second degree equation, right? It is AX square, uh, equation. If you see equation of second, uh, general second degree equation, it is AX square plus, two uh, HXY plus B Y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. This is the sec general second degree equation. So if you compare this with this equation, if you compare this uh, standard equation with this, we are having the value of a as lambda. What is b? b is coefficient of y square. So coefficient of y square here is 3. And what is c? c is the constant term that is 80. Now what is f? f is minus 21 by 2. So here it will be minus 21 upon 2, minus 21 upon 2. And what is g? g is minus 15 by 2. So here it will be minus 15 by 2. And what is h? h is 5. So this is our 5. And this must be equal to 0. Now we have to just solve this uh, determinant and we will get the value of lambda. So let's quickly solve it. So, expanding this uh, determinant, what we get lambda into this will be our uh, <clears throat> 3 into 18, that will be 54, and minus of this. So, 21 chi square, how much? 21 square is 441 upon 4. Okay. Then, minus of 5, what we get 18 into 5 is 90, right? 18 into 5, 90 minus. Uh, 21 into 15. So 21 into 10, 210, and 105, that is uh, 315. 
So this will be 90 minus 315 upon how much? So, uh, okay, let me write it clearly. It is minus 15 by 12, no? It is minus 15 by 12. So, uh, minus 5 into this 15, 18 into 5, 90 and minus, okay, this will be anyhow plus only. So, 315 upon 4. And then here we will have minus 15 by 2, minus 15 by 2 into this thing. So, this will be 21 into 5, how much? 105. So, minus, one, minus 105 upon 2 and uh, minus, minus and minus that will be plus. So, 45 upon 2. Now, this is the determinant value and that will be equal to 0. So, what we can do here? Uh, we can take LCM. So, 4, 4 into 4, 16. And uh, 4, 5, 20, 2, 1, 6, minus 4, 4, 1. Then minus 5. Here also we can take LCM 4. So, 360 minus 315. Then minus 15 upon 2. Okay, here it will be 2 only. So, minus 105 and minus plus 45. So, it will be minus 60. And that will be equal to 0. So, further what we can write from here, if you see, uh, we can take uh, LCM 4 from all the terms. Okay. So, it will be lambda into 216 minus 441. So, it will be 5, 2, 2, minus 2, 2, 5. Then uh, minus 5 into, this will be how much? 45. Right, so minus 45, then it will be 15 into 60, that will be plus 900, that will be equal to 0. So, from here, what we can say minus 225 lambda uh, minus 5525 225 and uh, plus 900 is equal to 0. So, we can say minus 2 to 5 lambda is equal to how much? This will be 900 minus 6 to 5. That will be 675. Okay. So, it will be minus 675. Minus minus will get cancelled out and we got the value of lambda as 3 or 675 upon 2 to 5. That will be nothing but 3. So, this will be our answer. This will be our answer to this question. Right. So, lambda equal to 3 is, yeah, it's there in option B. So, our correct answer will be option B. Okay. So, moving to the next question. Uh, let's see this. The point of intersection of the straight lines given by the equation this. 3y square minus 8xy minus 3x square minus 29x plus 3y minus 18 equal to 0. So, we need to find the uh, point of intersection. So, basically, uh, this general second degree equation is representing straight lines. Okay. Now, for finding the pair of uh, point of intersection of these two lines, what we used to do, we used to partial differentiate this uh, equation first with respect to x and then with respect to y. And then we uh, solve both the equations and we get the point of intersection. So, if you say our given equation is this 3y square minus 8xy minus 3x square, okay, minus 29x plus 3y minus 18 equal to 0. Now, what I will do, I will partial differentiate it with respect to x. So, it will be basically, uh, this thing will be 0. And here it will be, means while partial differentiating with respect to x, we treat the term consisting of y, means we treat y as constant. So, this 3y square will be treated as constant, hence its differentiation with respect to x will be 0. So, this will be 0. Then here it will be, uh, what? Minus 8y. Then minus of 6x. 
then minus of 29, this will be 0, this will be 0, and that will be equal to uh, 0, right? And uh, our partial differentiating with respect to y, uh, this will be 6y, okay? Then uh, here it will be minus 8x, okay? Here 6y minus 8x, this will be 0, this will be 0, and here it will be plus 3, and this will be 0, and the this equal to 0. So we got the equation, first equation is minus 8y minus 6x minus 29 equal to 0. And the second equation is 6y minus 8x plus 3 equal to 0. Now what we do, we solve these equations. We solve these two equations and we get the value of uh, x and y. And that point will be the point of intersection of this pair of straight lines. So what we can do, we can multiply the first equation by 6 and the second equation by 8. So on multiplying by 6, we will have uh, uh, minus 48y minus 36x, right? And minus 6954, 5. So minus of 174. And that will be equal to 0. And here we will have 48y. Uh, minus 64x plus 24 equal to 0. Now add both these equations, we will have minus of 100x and uh, minus of 150 equal to 0. So from here we get the value of x as uh, minus 3 upon 2, minus 3 upon 2. So this is our x coordinate of the point of intersection. Now put this value in any of the equations. So if I put here uh, x equal to minus 1 by 2, 6y minus 8, what is x? x is minus 3 by 2 and uh, plus 3 equal to 0. So 6y and uh, 4, so 24 plus 24 plus 3 equal to 0. So we got the value of y as minus 27 upon 6. That is nothing but uh, minus 9 or what you say <coughs> minus 9 upon 2 is it okay but uh, whether i have done any mistake because minus 9 by 2 i am not able to see in any of the option x is there minus 3 by 2 okay so 6y minus 8x so 6y minus 8 value of x is minus 3 by 2 and plus 3 equal to 0 so 6y, 4 times we are getting, okay, okay. So 4 into 3, it will be 12 only, no? So it will be plus 12. So basically we will have this value as minus 15 upon 6. Okay, yes, we are now getting minus 5 by 2. So the y coordinate of point of intersection is minus 5 by 2. Hence the option, if you see, the correct option is this option D minus 3 upon 2 and minus 5 upon 2. So uh, this is the method for finding the point of intersection. Okay, Means if the general second degree equation is given and uh, that equation is representing a pair of straight lines, so we have to find this del s uh, by del x equal to 0 and uh, this del s upon del y or partial differentiating with respect to x equal to 0 and partial differentiating with respect to y equal to 0 and we solve these equations. Okay. From here we get the point of intersection. And what is S basically? This is our S. This complete thing. This complete expression we call it as S. Okay. This is S. Now uh, moving to the next question. Uh, we are having this question number three. Okay. So if this equation, if this given equation represents two perpendicular lines, then we have to find the value of P and Q. So, okay. Let's first write the equation. Sorry. So let's first write the equation. So it is given 12 X square plus seven X Y minus P Y square and minus 18x plus qy 
and plus six equal to zero. Okay. So first of all, if this uh, equation is representing two perpendicular lines, means this coefficient of x square. Okay, coefficient of x square and uh, plus coefficient of y square. This must be equal to zero. Now, what is the coefficient of x square here? It is 12. And what is the coefficient of y square? It's 15. So, uh, sorry, coefficient of y square is minus p. So, 12 minus p, this must be equal to zero. So, straight away, we got the value of p as 12, right? Straight away, we got the value of p as 12. Uh, let's see the option. Okay, in option in all the options, the value of p is given as 12 only. So now our target is to find the value of q. So how can we find the value of q? Basically, this equation is representing pair of straight lines. No? If this equation is representing pair of straight lines, so uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, the value of delta should be equal to zero. And we know the value of delta. What is that? This is our A, B, C, right? A, B, C, F, F, G, G, H. So uh, the value of this determinant should be equal to zero. So now if you see, we are going to put the value of A, B, C, F, G, H all. So what is A here? A here is 12. Uh, what is B here? B here is, we got the value of B, no? So, uh, B is how much? Coefficient of Y square. So, coefficient of Y square is minus 12, right? Coefficient of Y square is minus 12. And uh, what is C? C is 6. Now, what is our uh, F? So, F is basically uh, Q upon 2, right? F will be Q upon 2. And uh, what is G? G is uh, minus 9. So minus 9, minus 9. And what is H? H is 7 by 2. 7 by 2. So we are going to put this determinant value equal to 0. Now uh, our next task is to solve this determinant. Okay. So what we can do, let's expand on the first row. So 12 into 6, that will be minus 72, then minus q square upon 4, okay, then minus times uh, minus 7 by 2, and uh, minus 7 by 2, yes, and then what, so 42 upon 2, or uh, this will 7 by 2 into 6, no, so it will be basically 21. So 21 minus how much? Uh, plus 9q upon 2. So plus 9q upon 2. And then minus 9 into uh, 7q upon 4. 7q upon 4, right? 7q upon 4. And minus of uh, 12 into 9 will be how much? 108 this equal to zero now we have to solve this so okay let's do it so taking four lcm here four to eight and four into seven is 28 so minus 288 minus of q square then minus seven by two here we will have uh, 42 plus 9q right 42 plus 9q then minus 9 if we take 4 lcm here it will be 7q minus uh, 432 right 432 equal to 0 so what can we do uh, we can take 4 lcm right from all the three terms so uh, this will be basically 12 into minus 288 minus q square then minus 7 into 42 plus 9q and minus 9 times 7q minus 432 this equal to 0. So it will be basically a quadratic in q right and we have to solve that. Mm. 
but it seems to be odd one okay so 12 into can we take anything common from here 288 mm. Well, into 288, if you see, uh, okay, let's expand it. So, 288 into 12. So, so, la, so let's satra and 576 and 288. So, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, minus 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 12 Q is square. Then, uh, 7 to the 14 on this 294 then uh, minus 63 q then minus 63 q once again then uh, plus of 9 to the 18 satais or a though and 9 4 36 and 88 so 3 1888 that will be equal to zero so what we get finally it is coming out to be minus 12 q square and minus 63 minus 63 will be minus of uh, 126 q <coughs> okay and if you add this 294 in it so it will be 6 4 10 15 7 and 3750 and we have to subtract it from here so 3750 so it will be basically 8 okay and 3 and 1 so 138 and with positive sign so plus 138 equal to 0 and we can take uh, 6 common no so it will be 2q square plus 2 1 q right means 21 uh, q and minus 2 3 means 23 equal to 0 so 2 q is square plus 21 q minus 23 equal to 0 now we have to solve this quadratic and we will get the answer so <coughs> it will be basically how much 23 into 2 46 Right. So 23 into Q, we can break it as 2Q square plus uh, 23Q minus 2Q minus 23 equal to 0. So we can take Q common. We will have uh, 2Q plus 23, right? And minus 1, 2Q minus plus 23 equal to 0. So from here, we get 2Q plus 23 into Q minus 1 equal to 0. So what we got, we got the value of Q as Q as 1 or Q as uh, minus 23 upon 22. Well, sorry, minus 23 upon 2. Minus 23 upon 2. So this will be the value of Q. P we have already got. The value of P is 12. Now we were finding the value of Q. So from this, uh, we are getting two values of Q. That is 1 and minus 23 upon 2. So minus 23 upon 2 is there. So whether 1 is also? Yes, 1. Or, so this will be multiple uh, correct question. So this option A is also correct because uh, value of Q is 1. Yes, the value of Q is 1 or minus 23 upon 2. So this option A will be correct for this question. Now let's take the next question. Question number 4. So, if the angle between two lines represented by this equation is tan inverse m, then we have to find the value of m. Okay. So, this is uh, 2x square plus 5xy plus 3y square, okay, plus 7y plus 4 equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, we have a formula, okay, but... Uh, 
we have a formula for but that is for a homogeneous second degree equation right homogeneous second degree equation if the pair of straight lines is represented in this form ax square plus 2hxy plus by square is equal to 0 then we have the value of tan theta as what 2 into under root of h square minus ab upon mod of a plus b right now but this equation is our uh, a x square means this is the general second degree equation, right? So a h square plus 2 h x y plus b y square and plus 2 g x plus 2 f y plus a equal to 0. So basically, if you see, no, we can uh, write it in terms of this, in terms of our homogeneous equation with the shifted, like suppose point of intersection, point of intersection of both these lines is x1 y1 right the point of intersection is x1 y1 and here point of intersection is our origin 0 comma 0 here the point of intersection is origin here the point of intersection is x1 and y so basically uh, this is shifted right this is only shifted there will be no change in the angle like angle will be same whatever the angle is uh, for this the same angle will be for this one okay so this is what i need to say uh, so we can apply the formula here also and the other way is like uh, we can find the equation of two lines from this right and after having the two equations we can easily find by applying the formula of tan theta that is m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m2 so that is one process but what i uh, mean to uh, emphasize is that what I mean to say is that like uh, there will be no change in the angle like angle between the lines will be same for this and for this equation. So I am applying uh, uh, the value on this I'm substituting the value on in this formula only. So what I am getting two times what is h square h square is 5 by 2 chi square that is 25 upon 4 and minus a b 2 into 3 that will be 6 uh, right a into b and uh, further we will have a plus b so mod of 5 right so what we are getting here we are having uh, 25 4 and 1 right so uh, 2 into under root 1 by 4 upon mod of 5 that is 1 upon 5 okay and it is given out to be this is our tan theta and from here we get theta is equal to how much tan inverse 1 by 5 okay and uh, so what is the value of m m is nothing but 1 by 5 right so this will be the value of m okay <coughs> so uh, our homogeneous equation if you see this will be uh, the lines passing through origin right but if that is uh, represented in this form, if it is represented in this form, uh, general second degree equation, so it will be somewhere here, right? Somewhere here, whose point of intersection will be uh, here it is origin, but here it is x1, comma y1. So this whole thing is getting shifted. No, see, this whole thing is getting shifted. Uh, only the point of intersection will change, but the angle between the lines will not change, right? So this is L1, L2. And this is our L1, L2. So hope this, uh, this is clear to all of you. So <clears throat> the angle between them will be, so uh, as per the question, the value is M is coming out to be 1 by 5. So option B is correct. Now uh, moving to the next question, that is question number 5. Let's see. Question number 5, the equation of second degree equation, second degree this, represents a pair of straight lines then the distance between them is okay so uh, the equation given is x square plus 2 root 2 x y okay and plus 2 y square plus 4 x plus 4 root 2 y plus 1 equal to 0 so uh, this equation is representing a pair of straight lines right and uh, we have to find the distance between them so 
what we can do we can uh, individually write the equation right equation of uh, straight lines so like what what is my approach i am going to uh, write the equation of straight lines individually okay so if you observe this uh, x square plus 2 root 2 xy plus 2y square uh, this is nothing but uh, x plus root 2y ka whole square this complete thing right so uh, x plus root 2 ka whole square that will be this thing now what uh, how can we write the equation of uh, equa uh, equation of a straight line individually we used to write it by x plus root 2y i am assuming a constant a okay and here i am writing x plus root 2y okay and plus of b and that will be equal to this equation this will represent this equation so compare karenge agar hum log if we are going to compare the coefficient of comparing the coefficient of x and y what we will get what is the coefficient of uh, coefficient of x from this uh, these two factors it will be a when it will be get multiplied with uh, this term will get multiplied with x so it will be a and uh, this b when this b is getting multiplied with this x then we will be having the coefficient of x so the coefficient of x will be a plus b and what is the coefficient of x here the coefficient of x here is 4 so this is our first equation and uh, the second thing we are going to compare the coefficient of y so how do we get the coefficient of y here see the coefficient of y we can have uh, when this thing will get multiplied right this uh, a into root 2y okay so a into root 2 a into root 2 and how again this this b when this b will get multiplied with this so plus b into a uh, root 2 this will be the coefficient of y and what is the coefficient of y here it is 4 root 2 so this is our second equation so if you take a root 2 common here so we will have a plus b equal to uh, 4 uh, root 2 okay so a plus b is coming out to be 4 okay and what else if you multiply this that will be the constant term right so this a b will be equal to how much one a b will be equal to one so how can we get this if we put uh, a b equal to one uh, means this is one equation and this is one equation a plus b equal to four so if you see we can find the value of a minus b right a minus b whole square will be how much uh, 16 and minus 4 so that will be 12 so a minus b will be basically uh, 2 root uh, 3 is it okay and a plus b is uh, 4 so a plus b is 4 and a minus b is how much 2 root 3 so we got the value of 2a as uh, 2 into uh, root 3 plus 2. So the value of a is coming out to be root 3 plus 2. And uh, so basically this a minus b will be with plus minus n, right? Because this is, uh, we are taking the under root. So this will be, I am taking the plus sign only here. So if the value of A is coming out to be root 2 plus root 3, what will be the value of B? So 2 plus uh, root 3 plus B is equal to 4. So from here, we get the value of B as 2 minus root 3, right? And we can solve by taking the minus sign also. So I think the same value will come. So now we got the equation as how what our equation of first line is. Uh, x plus uh, root 2y and plus a a is what uh, 2 plus root 3 2 plus root 3 equal to 0 and the second equation of second line is x plus uh, root 2y and plus 2 minus root 3 equal to 0 so basically these are parallel lines right 
these two lines are parallel lines. <laughs> so, uh, what will be the distance between them? Distance between them will be this thing, uh, C1 minus C2, right? So, 2 plus root 3, 2 plus root 3 minus 2 plus root 3, okay? And whole divided upon under root of 1 chi square and plus root 2 chi square, root 2 chi square. So, this will be plus 2 minus 2 will get cancelled out. Uh, 2 root 3 upon uh, how much? This will be 2 plus 1, that is 3. So, root 3. So, this will be equal to 2 units. So, it's given in option A. So, this will be the distance between these two lines. So, option A is correct. Okay. We are getting the distance between line as uh, uh, between the lines as two units. So this was our question number five. Let's see this question number six. So find the area of the parallelogram formed by the lines this. Okay. So the first equation is giving us the pair of straight lines. The second equation is also giving us a pair of straight lines. So basically we are having the uh, four lines. Okay. And we have to uh, find the area of parallelogram formed by those four lines. So, what we can do, we can simply uh, get the equations first, okay. The equation of four lines, which are, from, uh, which are forming this parallelogram. So, this is 2x square plus 5xy plus 3y square, okay. Uh, this equal to 0. So, 2 into 3, 6. So, we can split the middle term as 2x square plus uh, 3xy plus 2xy and plus 3y square equal to 0. Taking x common, we will have 2x plus 3y and uh, taking y common, we will have 2x plus 3y equal to 0. So, 2x plus 3y, okay, and x plus y equal to 0. So, this is basically uh, two equations, uh, two equations of line. This one is our L1, this one is our L2. And uh, on solving this, we will have uh, the next two lines. So, let's solve this equation also. So, the given equation is 2x square plus 5xy uh, plus 3y square and uh, plus 3x plus 4y plus 1 equal to 0. Okay, so this is what we have already solved, no? So, yes, we can now compare the coefficient of x and y. We can buy, uh, find the value of uh, straight lines. So, this will be basically 2x plus 3y. I'm assuming the constant to be a here. And uh, then x plus y plus b and now I am going to compare the coefficient. So if you see, if you see uh, what will be the coefficient of x here, it will be a and uh, plus a plus 2b, right? And that must be equal to 3. And the second equation we will get by comparing the coefficient of y. So it will be a. Okay. And here we will get the coefficient of y as how much? b into 3. So, that is 3b. So, a plus 3b will be equal to uh, 4. Now, subtract uh, this equation 1 from equation 2. We will have the value of b as 1. Once we get the value of a, once we get the value of b, we can easily find the value of a as uh, 2 into a will be also equal to 1. Okay. So, basically our L3 will be, L3 line will be this uh, 2x plus 3y plus 1 equal to 0 and our L4 line will be uh, x plus y, okay, x plus y and plus 1 equal to 0. So, uh, we are having the four lines, right, we are having the four lines which are forming the parallelogram. So, if the a line is given in this form, if the line is given in this form, y is equal to mx plus c, okay. So, we know the area of parallelogram. We know the area of parallelogram. We used to give it by uh, 
mod of C1 minus C2, okay, into T1 minus T2 upon uh, 1 minus M1, M2, right? 1 minus M1, M2. Oh, sorry, M1 minus M2, not 1 minus M1, M2. That will be M1 minus M2, okay? Now, if you compare these first two lines, if you compare these first two lines, uh, let me uh, change the uh, let me change the color of the pen. So it will be basically uh, uh, y equal to. Okay. So uh, can we draw? Uh, let me draw the uh, parallelogram, rough diagram. Okay. So yes, the uh, this equation is two x plus three y equal to zero. And the line parallel to it will be 2x plus 3y plus 1 equal to 0. And uh, this equation is x plus y equal to 0. And the line parallel to it is uh, x plus y plus 1 equal to 0. Okay. So basically, if you see, uh, what will be the value of c1 here? What will be the value of c1 here? c1 is 0, right? And uh, what will be the value of uh, C2? So this will be the C2, right? So this will be uh, value of C2 will be minus 1 upon 3, minus 1 upon 3. And what will be the value of M1? M1 will be minus 3 by 2, the slope of these two lines, these two parallel lines. So M1 will be uh, uh, minus 2 upon 3, right? Minus 2 upon 3. And similarly, if you see what will be the value of uh, C2, sorry, uh, what will be the value of D1? D1 here is 0 and D2, that is constant term. So constant term here is minus 1 and the slope here is how much? Uh, minus 1, right? Now put the substitute this value. So area will be, area of parallelogram will be C1 is 0 minus C2 is uh, minus 1 by 3. So this will be plus 1 by 3. Okay. Then whole multiplied by D1 minus D2, that will be 1. And upon M1 minus M2, that is minus 2 upon 3. And minus M2, that will be plus 1. So how much this is coming out to be 1 by 3 upon uh, 1 minus 2 upon 3, this will be also 1 by 3 modulus. So this is coming out to be 1 square unit. So this will be the area of the parallelogram, okay? So important to note that area of parallelogram is given by this, where the uh, equation is given in this term. Equation is uh, equation of straight lines is in y is equal to mx plus c form. And if you know, the, uh, you know this formula, so you can easily substitute the value of c1, c2, d1, d2, m1, m2, and you get the area of the parallelogram. So what we have done, we have just uh, first find out the uh, equation of lines, okay, which are representing this, uh, we are, which are constituting or which are uh, making this parallelogram. And once we get this, we can easily get the answer. So uh, the area is coming out to be one square unit. So this will be our answer. No options available here. So I'm writing here. This is our answer. Now, uh, let's see this question number seven. Uh, it is saying find the locus of the in center. Okay, find the locus of the in center of the triangle formed by uh, this equation and this. So basically, this is uh, the first equation will give a pair of straight lines, and the second equation will give a straight line. So basically, we are having three uh, straight lines which are forming a triangle. And we have to find the locus of its in center. Okay, so uh, let me first write the equation. So it is x, y. Okay. It is x, y minus 4x minus 4y uh, plus 16 equal to 0. Okay. So if we take x common from here, first two terms, we will have y minus 4. And if we take 4 common, we will have y minus 4 equal to 0. So y minus 4 into 
x minus 4 equal to 0. Okay. So the first equation is giving these two lines. So our first line is uh, y minus 4 equal to 0. Our second line is x minus 4 equal to 0. So y minus 4 equal to 0 means what? y equal to 4. So this is our first line. x equal to 4 is our second line. And our third line is given as what? Uh, x plus y equal to a. x plus y equal to a. So like let's first draw a neat, uh, sorry, a rough sketch for this. So basically this will be our x equal to, oh, sorry, kya ho gaya? Okay, so this is our y axis. This is our x axis, okay. And somewhere here it will be our x equal to 4, okay. And somewhere here it will be our y equal to 4. So this line is y equal to 4. This line is x equal to 4. So what will be its point of intersection? Let me call this point P. So its point of intersection will be 4 comma 4, obviously, right? Uh, and this point is lying on this line, right? This point is lying on, if you join this, this is our line y equal to x. This is our uh, y equal to x line, right? So this point P is lying on this line y equal to x. And both are, uh, these lines y equal to 4 and x equal to 4, both are uh, at right angles, okay? Now uh, let me draw this uh, this uh, uh, this third line so that we can see this uh, triangle. So let me say uh, this is this is our oh sorry Just a bit. Yes. So yes, what I am saying, this is our third line, x plus y equal to a, x plus y equal to a, where this point will be a comma zero. Okay. And uh, this point will be zero comma, zero comma a. Okay. So the question is asking for this triangle. A triangle ka in center ka locus. Okay. So let me ask you one thing. The uh, What is in center? In center is the point of intersection of the angle bisectors. Okay. Internal angle bisectors. So internal angle bisectors, if you see the point of uh, this point P, the angle, if you, if I name it as a, uh, what do you say? Uh, a. Okay. B. So if name it, if I say angle ABP, okay, ABP is how much? It is 90 degree. This, this line is variable. This line, white line is variable, right? This may move uh, in this direction also or this direction also. But, but the angle bisector of angle APP, angle, its angle bisector will always line on this line y equal to x. Angle bisector will always line always lie on y equal to x. How many of you agree on this? Right. So if you see this, uh, this angle APB, that is 90 degree and its angle bisector will always line on y equal to x. So no matter where this, uh, this white line moves, whether in this uh, direction or that direction or opposite direction, means whether this line move towards origin or away from origin, uh, the internal angle bisector, uh, right, the angle bisector of P will always lie on this line. And uh, from here, we can conclude that, we can conclude that uh, the in center will always lie on the line y equal to x. So basically in center, in center will always lie, will always lie on y equal to x will always lie on y equal to 6. So that will be the locus, that will be the locus of in center, right? Somewhere here it will be there. This will be our in center and it will always lie on y equal to x line. So hope this is clear to all of you.
Ok. <clears throat> so uh, now let's take the next question, question number eight. Question is saying if the equation 2hxy plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to zero represents two straight lines, uh, then so that they form a rectangle of area mod of fg upon h square with the coordinate axis. Achha. So the given equation is this thing. The given equation is 2hxy, 2hxy plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. And it is representing two straight lines, right? It is representing two straight lines. Then so that the area of triangle, a rectangle. Okay. So for uh, representing this equation, means if this equation is representing two straight lines, uh, that means our delta must be equal to zero. And if you see a delta is what? A, B, C. So A is zero here. A, B, C plus 2 F, G, H. So this will be 2 F, G, H uh, minus A, F square that is zero minus B, G square will be zero and minus C, H square minus C, H square equal to zero. So basically from here, if we get 2 F G H is equals to C H square. So 1 H and 1 H will get cancelled out because H is not equal to zero here, right? So we uh, got one equation that is 2 F G is equal to C H. Okay. And uh, what else information is provided here? then so that they form a rectangle of area this with the coordinate axis okay um, so coordinate axis ke saath iska ye nikalna hai okay what we can do we can substitute the value of f in this equation so it will be 2hxy okay plus 2gx plus 2y what is f F is CH upon 2G, CH upon 2G and plus C equal to 0. So uh, we can take 2x common from here, right? We can take 2x common from here. So we will be having G plus HY, G plus HY, right? And from here, if we see, we can take uh, C by G common. So we will have G plus G plus this two and two will get canceled out. G plus H Y, right? G plus H Y equal to zero. So we got the two equations G plus H Y equal to zero and two X plus C upon G, two X plus C upon G equal to zero. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, draw the rough diagram for this. So this is our x axis, this is our y axis and uh, from here we get, uh, this is our L1 no? and this is our L2. So from here we get y is equals to, so if you see L1 is, uh, y is equals to minus g upon h, okay, and if we see L2, L2 means what? Uh, the value of x is coming out to be minus c upon g or 2g you can say. So this is our x equal to x equal to minus c upon 2g. Okay. And this is our y equal to uh, minus g upon h. So basically this area we need to calculate this area, area of rectangle, right? So area of rectangle, if you see area of rectangle, that will be uh mod of right mod of c upon 2g into g upon h okay length into height or length into uh, breadth so this will be equal to if we uh, substitute the value of c here we will have 2fg upon h okay 
so 2fg upon h and already it is uh, 2g here already 2g was there into g upon h ka mod lelo so that will be this 2 2 will get cancelled out this g and g will get cancelled out and we will have mod of f g upon h square so this is what we were required to prove and we got this result so hence it is proved that the uh, this will be our area of triangle, uh, rectangle formed by the pair of straight lines and our coordinate axis okay so this was our question number eight now let's see this question number nine find the area of triangle formed by the lines this uh, ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to zero and the axis of x so basically this is general second degree equation ax square plus 2hxy uh, plus by square okay and plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to zero we have to find the area of triangle formed by this line so let me say uh, these are the two straight lines and this is our axis of x means y equal to zero and uh, this is our l1 and l2 l1 and l2 line okay so if we put y equal to zero in this equation if we put y equal to zero in this equation so it will give me the x coordinate of these two points right a b the x coordinate of this a and b will be uh, we we will have when we put y equal to zero in this equation so let's do it so it will be a x square uh, plus zero plus zero plus two g x okay and plus c equal to zero so this is a quadratic in x okay and we need to find the area of this triangle area of this triangle right and uh, so x1 and x2 we can easily get it okay x1 and x2 are the roots of this equation but for finding the uh, area for finding the area of triangle what we need to do we need to do half into base okay and uh, this height okay so half into base into this if i name it c and it's d so half into base into height that is cd so for calculating this ab what we need to do we need to find the difference of the roots so x1 minus x2 ka mod chahiye apne ko so this is nothing but under root of d upon 2a so what is under root of d it is a uh, uh, p square means 4g square minus 4a and c okay under root is ka jayega and upon 2 times a so 2a so that is nothing but uh, this will be our uh, 2 under root g square minus ac right g square minus ac upon 2a so this 2 and 2 will get cancelled out so mod of uh, 2a okay so no this is basically mod of uh, root d by only a comes right so this will be mod of a this two will be as it is so two under root of g square minus a c upon mod of a this will be the this will give us the what you say a b length right this is nothing but our a b length and what else we need to find we need to find this cd so basically cd is nothing but the y coordinate y coordinate of the point of intersection so if you see this cd will be y coordinate right the cd length will be y coordinate of the uh, point of intersection of l1 and l2 right now what will be the y coordinate what will be the y coordinate for this uh, point of intersection so basically y coordinate will be if you uh, know this is our what you say a b okay a b c f f and here we used to write h no g g g h h 
so this was our delta right this is a, a memory at like how we used to uh, find the coordinate of uh, point of intersection so we normally write it as a h h b g f and we again repeatedly write it as a h so the y coordinate will be basically uh, this a b h square then h f b g right and then uh, this will be our numerator so the y coordinate will be the c d will be how much this is h square minus a b will be in the denominator okay h square minus a b will be in the denominator what we are getting from this multiplication h square minus a b and uh, from here we get uh, a f minus g h a f minus g h so basically this will be our y coordinate so if you see uh, this area area of triangle will be half into ab ab we can write from here two times under root of g square minus ac upon mod of a okay and what will be the cd length cd length is this af minus gh upon h square minus ab okay so if you are able to further simplify it it's well and fine or you can leave this question uh, as it is so this will be our area okay this will be our area so uh, this two and this two will get cancelled out so our final area will be under root of g square minus ac upon mod a into af minus gh upon h square minus ab okay so in this particular question this value of ab uh, c and fgh is not known but if you are having that, you can simply put that value in this equation uh, or in this result, and you will have the area of the triangle formed by the pair of straight lines and our uh, axis of x, that is x axis or y equal to zero. Okay. So this was the solution to this question number nine. This is our question number 10. Question number 10. After this, I don't think we are having any question. Okay. So basically, this is the last question of this exercise. So question is asking to find the equations of the straight line passing through the point 1, comma 1 and uh, parallel to the lines represented by the equation this. Okay. So x square minus 5xy uh, plus 4y square. Uh, plus x plus 2y minus 2 equal to 0. Okay. This is the given equation of a, a pair of straight lines. We have to find the equation of straight lines which are parallel to these lines and passing through this point. So, okay. First, uh, let's uh, find the equation of these lines individually. So, we will have x square 4, okay, minus 4xy minus xy uh, plus 4y square. Is it okay? And uh, what we can write it for the further, we can take x common. So x minus 4y and uh, if we take y common, we will have x minus 4y. Okay. So x minus 4y and uh, x minus y. These are the means I am solving this only uh, second uh, second degree terms right so on solving second degree terms we are having this so uh, if we see our first line will be x minus 4y plus a equal to 0 okay plus a equal to 0 and our second line will be x minus y plus b equal to 0 okay and uh, now we have to find the value of uh, sorry, the equation of lines which are parallel to these two lines and passing through point this. So if we see, we don't actually need to find the value of A and B. That is not required. That is not our target. Our target is to find the equation of lines which are parallel to these lines. So let me say our required lines will be of this form. Our required lines will be of this form. So uh, our required, uh, let me write it as L1 uh, dash. So it will be of this form x minus 4y plus m equal to 0. Okay. And our L2 dash line will be x minus y uh, and plus n equal to 0. 
Now this will pass through point one comma one, right? This will pass through one comma one. So let's uh, put the value of uh, x and y one as one and one. So we will have one minus four plus m equal to zero. So from here we get the value of m as how much? Three minus three plus one minus three. So m is coming out to be three. And if you put one one here, we will have n equal to zero. So basically our required lines will be this. Our required lines will be this x minus 4y plus m that is 3 and into the joint equation we can give it in this way x minus y uh, x minus y plus 0 that is nothing x minus y equal to 0. So the required line will be uh, this if we further want to solve it we can solve so x square uh, minus xy uh, minus 4xy then uh, plus 4y square plus 3x minus 3y equal to 0 or x square uh, sorry this is x square and then minus 5xy okay plus 4y square and plus 3x minus 3y equal to 0. So this will be the required equation of lines okay. So I think uh, and I hope everyone is clear on this question or uh, rather uh, everyone is clear on this uh, complete exercise. So there were total uh, 10 questions in this, which we have discussed all of uh, which, yeah, only 10 questions and we have discussed each and every question, okay, in detailed way. So I hope uh, everyone, everyone got the solutions, okay, and uh, if uh, you are having any doubt, uh, you got clarified from this video. So yes, uh, we are done with this exercise and we will uh, meet once again with the next topic or with the next exercise if left in this chapter. So till then, Tata, take care, goodbye.